Good evening, good evening. This is Lynette and this is the 21st Century Watchman's Channel. And it's about time. It's about time. It's a one-year chronological Bible study where we go through the books of the Bible um, in time order. And we're now in the book of Ezekiel and we're in chapter 16 through 17 or 16 and 17. Let's get started, shall we? Again, the word of the Lord came to me saying, Son of man. Remember, Son of man is not the same as Son of Son of Man, when it's referred to Jesus, which is which means ruler of this of mankind. Son of Man in this in this instance means dust, just regular earth earth link, just regular human. Son of Man, make Jerusalem understand the heinous and vile nature of her repulsive idolatrous acts, and say, Thus says the Lord God to Jerusalem, all of Israel, you your spiritual origin and your birth are from the land of the Canaanite. You, this is what you're spiritual. That means you got you got all your stuff, all your ways from the Canaanites. You don't know how to act. You you've you know you've been watching their ways. That's where your spiritual origin seems to come from. This is them right here worshiping um, the golden calf and having that up there. That's what that means. And it says your spiritual father was an Amorite and your spiritual mother a Hittite. All the things, all the people that were around them, that's who their spiritual people were. It wasn't necessarily their natural, but their spiritual father was that. And as for your birth, on the day you were born, your navel cord was not cut, nor were you washed with water for cleansing, nor were you rubbed with salt or even wrapped in, clo in cloths. No eye looked with pity on you to do any of these things to you, to have compassion on you, but you were thrown out in the open field, for you were loathed on the day that you were born. You were never a loved group of people. And here I am loving on you. You were born into slavery. I looked at you and nobody else did. I looked at you is what the Lord's saying. How many of you feel like you were not worthy of the Lord's um, looking upon you and seeing that love and that you came from a very low place and nobody ever paid any attention and nobody ever cared for you? That's I, that's my story. I don't know about some or you, but for me, that's my story. When I passed by you and saw you squirming in your newborn blood, I said to you, while you were in, there in your blood, live. Yes, I said to you, while you were there in your blood, live. I made you, Israel, multiply like plants which grow in the field. And you grew up and became tall and you reached the age of for wearing fine jewelry. Your breasts were formed and your hair had grown, yet you were naked and bare. You still had nothing going for yourself. Then I passed by you again and looked on you. Behold, you were maturing and at that time for love. And I spread my skirt over you and covered your nakedness. If you remember back in the day with Ruth and and Boaz, he, he after she laid at his feet while he was asleep, she, he put his cover over her. That lets you know that she was under his protection. She was his to protect at this particular point. He, that's what that means. So he put his skirt over to cover her nakedness to let know that she was um, under his protection. So here we're saying, or he's put his skirt over her. And so I'm saying to you in this instance, God put his skirt over Israel um, to cover our to cover their nakedness, to let them know that they belong to him and that they will be protected by him. The same thing with us. Jesus put his skirt over us and we're covering our naked, our nakedness, our, um, um, our bad, our, our things that should not be out for everybody else to see. We are his bride. The same thing, way, the way Ruth became Boaz's bride, the same um, way that Israel is the, uh, um, the bride of, of Jehovah God, creator God. Yes, I swore on an oath to you and entered into a covenant with you, says the Lord God, and you became mine. Clear. He's, God is not placed very possessive of what's his, and we should be as possessive too. He is our God. We shouldn't be adulterous, is what he's saying. He says, then I washed you with water. Yes, I thoroughly washed away from you the clinging blood and anointed you with oil. He did. He did. Um <laughs> <laughs> that the 23rd Psalms. Um, he, he said he anointed our heads with oil. He said that. It's, it's right there in the 23rd Psalms. I also clothed you with embroidered cloth and put sandals or of porpoise skin on your feet, dressed you up, 
and I wrapped you with fine linen and covered you with silk. When we were poor and we needed somebody and we didn't have anything, we were all clinging to the Lord. He's saying, this is what happened. I adorned you with ornaments and I put bracelets on your wrist and a necklace around your neck. I also put a ring in your nostril and earrings in your ears and a beautiful crown on your head. Thus you were adorned with gold and silver and your dress was made of fine linen and silk and embroidered cloth. You ate fine flour and honey and oil. So you were extremely beautiful and you advanced and prospered into royalty. Then your fame went out among the nations on account of your beauty. For it was perfect because of my, my majesty and splendor which I bestowed on you, says the Lord God. So because I was your husband, I gave you all these things. Here's Israel at its finest. This is when Solomon was the, was the man and, and it was the superpower and it was running things. And it was all this opulence, all this gold, all these, this, this, the, the lions going along the, uh, uh, his throne and where he was in that room. And all these pillars, uh, the opulence of this, this era. And he's letting them know, this is, you were great. And your fame went out among the nations. And, you know, just the same way with us now, Christianity was the thing. And it was the fastest growing religion and it was doing so well here in America. And now we're on the decline, just like these people are here in the Bible. These are my thoughts. But you trusted in and relied on your beauty and prostituted yourself in idolatry and its debauched rituals because of your fame. And you poured out your immoralities on every willing passerby and your beauty was his as you worshiped the idols of the Gentile nations. They did not stay true to their Lord. The same thing with us. When we're going, when we're get to where we're going, we're praying. I have uh, people I know that once they get where they're going, or that when they've gotten where they're going, they prayed all the way. Please pray for me to reach this goal. And as soon as they get there and they get to hobnob with the rich and famous, they forget about how they got there. The prayers and who who was prayed to and all the fasting that they did and all the the uh, church time they spent and and the you know ministry going to and whatever else all the meetings making sure we made those meetings but as soon as we arrive then we forgot all about it and we're making all the vacations and we're we secured the bag now we don't really need god here's and we start doing other things and our stuff becomes our god our vacations our comforts our connections become our god Network meetings become our um, services instead of us, our worship services, instead of we're networking instead of worshiping. We can't, they're not interchangeable. We can't do that. All right. You took some of your clothes and made for yourself decorated high places and shrines of various colors and prostituted yourself on them. Things which you should never have come up, should have never come about and taken place. This never should have happened. He had done so much and he has done so much for us. We shouldn't be taking what he's done and had what he's given and wearing it for the benefit of others. Meaning the gifts he's given and shouldn't be used to um, be prostituted to other, to other entities. God's giving you special gifts. And the, you know, on all the, the Bible tells you your, your gifts will make room for you. The gifts are His first. We have to, and we have to remember that He's done all this stuff for us to be a blessing to other people. We shouldn't be be concerned about what how we're going to live all the time and what more stuff we can gain, all, all what additional things we can gain. We should be trying to sow into His kingdom and take care of the poor. We should be how is he concerned about how He's going to be glorified. All of those things still going. You also took your beautiful jewels and beautiful vessels made of my gold and my silver, which I had given you and made for yourself images of men so that you could prostitute yourself with them. How unfortunate bust and, you know, an image of so-and-so. I got this picture of, I made this picture of, you know, whoever the, this famous person is so that you could worship and look at these monuments and nothing, nothing to the glory of God. We, we want all these monuments of men and this bust of so-and-so and this sculpture of so-and-so and nothing to the glory of God. And so I, here's the gold that they had during biblical times and how it looked as they chiseled it off from different places. And this is what they made these 
piggy banks and you know gold calves and whatnot. I'm just throwing it piggy banks as you see the little the, the little slide in there, but that's what they used to you know to gather money. How unfortunate, right? He says, and you took your embroidered clothing and covered them and offered my oil and my incense before them. How unfortunate. Still going. It's just just really sad, right? Also, my bread, which I gave you, made from the fine flour and, and oil and honey, which I fed you, you even offered it before idols, no better than cow dung, as a sweet and soothing aroma. That's what you did you, before idols that were no better than cow dung says the Lord God. Moreover, you took your sons and your daughters whom you had born to me and you destroyed them as sacrifices to your man-made gods, Molech, in fact. Um, and it, so here's a, a picture depicting Molech and the, someone offering their, their child, their infant child uh, to Molech and they burned them, passing them through the fire. That was part of their practices. And they got these practices from the pagan nations around them. He says, were your gross immorality so small a matter? You slaughtered my children and offered them up to worthless idols, forcing them in the past through the, the hideousness of the fire. And in all your repulsive acts and prostitutions, you did not remember the days of your youth when you were naked and bare, squirming in your blood. You didn't remember where you came from. You forgot where you came from, boo. And the Lord's not feeling it. And the Lord's not feeling it now. He's, he's talking to Israel here, but is he? Is he talking to Israel? Because we're, we've come up the same way, America, as a, a fledgling nation saying we were dedicated to God, one nation under God. With the big G, it wasn't under nation, uh, one nation under God with the little G. It was under nation, one nation under God with the big G. And here we are now with many gods. How un We're a polytheistic society now. How unfortunate. Just saying. Then it came about after all your wickedness, woe, woe to you, says the Lord God, that you built yourself an altar for prostitution and made yourself a high place for ritual prostitution in every square of Jerusalem. In every city, in, well, in every country, there are pagans that are practicing witchcraft and all kinds of other uh, things that are idolatrous and that are anti-Christ. And there's going to be a comeuppance. And we must be prepared. At the beginning of every street, you built your high place and made your beauty repulsive. At the beginning of every street, they did this. And you offered your body to every passerby and multiplied your obscene immorality. We've got to stop looking. Everything that we see, every new trend, that's what every passerby means in today's society. Every new trend, we're jumping on it. Whoever it is, we're all in. We're all in. We're 10 toes down. We've got to, to say no to something. There has to be a halt to something. You also prostituted yourself with the Egyptians, your lustful neighbors, by embracing their pagan rituals. Whatever they're doing, we celebrate Halloween like it's Christmas. What is up with that? I'm just saying. It's, it's, it's not that big of a deal. It's harvest. We get called into something else and let our kids wear the, still wear and participate those in those um, uh, costume wearing and spooky stuff and that's okay it's not that big of a deal yes it is and you multiplied your obscene immorality to provoke me to anger now that's what's 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 really good and behold now listen very carefully i have stretched out my hand against you reduced your portion and handed you over to the desires to those who hate you now i've handed you over to the desire of those who hate you that's the worst the daughters of the philistines who are ashamed of your infamous behavior. They are embarrassed by you. The Philistines, who had, you know, were the worst of the worst, they are ashamed of you and of your, your infamous behavior. You prostituted, prostituted yourself with the Assyrians because you were not satisfied. You prostituted yourselves with them and still were not satisfied. No, you, you, whatever they were doing, you were doing. You were doing, if they were sacrificing their children, you were doing it. If they had um, temples, with whichever God they were they were dealing with, you did that too. Moreover, you increased your obscene immorality with the land of tradesmen, the, Chald the Chaldea, Babylonia. And yet, even with, with this, you were not satisfied. You were hanging out with, with you know, um, Chaldea, let's not forget, or Babylonia, let's not forget when the Chaldeans came, um, Hezekiah showed them all he had. And they were so excited 
about getting gifts from them. And he, he inqu they inquired of him. The Assyrians inquired of him. He showed them all they had, you know, and all he had. And they came and took over, you know, in the next go round after Hezekiah died and took over his son. Um, throne that's or dethrone the son this is what happens you know we we're so excited about being friends with the enemy being friends with with those in the world that we forget that they are of the world and that that we're not supposed to be like them I'm just saying one who we're supposed to be loyal to how weakened by longing and lust in your is your heart says the Lord God while you do all these things the actions of a bold and brazen prostitute all right that's what we look at this. We're weakening um, ourselves by longing and lusting after something that we should not be longing and lusting. That we shouldn't be looking at them and say, oh, they got such great stuff. We should not be looking like that. When you built your, th your shrine altar for the prostitution or for prostitution at the beginning of every street and made your high place in every public square, you were not like a prostitute because you refused payment. So you didn't even get much paid for it. You was just doing some stuff. You just wanted to be down. So you were the one out here and you're giving it away for free my god who does that that's not even a prostitute you know what's the word need i say ho or whore i you know i'm just trying to call it what it is ho my god your adulterous wife who becomes and receives strangers instead of her husband that's what he says you adulterous wife that's what we are that's what he considers us if we're not um loyal to him and we are still having other gods if if our comfort is our god if our me time is our god if our car is our god if our vacationing time is our god if our friends if our if our fitness regimen is our god we can't make time for him those are our god if our children if our man if our woman whatever it is 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 more important than spending time with god then we're adulterous wives Men give gifts to all prostitutes, but you give your gifts to all your lovers. You the one giving the gifts out. You're not even a prostitute again. You are bribing the pagan nation to come to you as allies from every direction from for your obscene immoralities. We're giving them gifts to come do things to us. We're excited about showing them all our stuff and 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 trading with them. We want to be uh, amongst the the elite. We want to show everybody when we were. When we were the ones everybody wanted to be like, and we don't know how to act and, and deal with our being different. We don't want to be set apart. God wants us to be set apart, still going. And you are different from other unfaithful women in your promiscuity, in that no one follows you to lure you into prostitution. And because you give more, more money and no money is given to you. You don't want to give the money out and none's given to you. So we, we're the trick. We're not even being, we're not even tricking. We're the one, we're the trick. We're the giving out the money. That's where the trick is. The prostitute usually gets money from her trick. We're giving out the money, so we're, we're getting tricked. How crazy is that? In this way, you are different. Therefore, O prostitute Israel, hear the word of the Lord. Thus says the Lord God, because your lewdness was poured out and your nakedness uncovered through your obscene immoralities with your lovers, and with all your repulsive idols and because of the blood of your sons that you gave to them. Therefore, listen, I will gather all your lovers, your pagan allies, with whom you took pleasure and all those whom you love with all those whom you hated. And I will even gather them against you from every direction and will expose your nakedness to them that they may see all your nakedness, making you, Israel, an object of loathing and of mockery, a spectacle among the nations. Have you noticed how the... The world powers are rallying against um, America at this particular point. We see this whole BRICS thing. They're rallying against the dollar. Does this not make you think that this may, this is a, 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 a something that's synonymous to us too at this particular time? I'm sure all the nations went through, all the powers went through the same thing, and all of us have been brought down. We all start off good, and then and then we were brought down. But, but in this time, this seems very much like us. And I'm just encouraged by this scripture in the way that, in so that much we, we should be repenting. That's what's causing me to repent. That, that I see us in this, not just 
them, I see us. I am, I've, you know, sinned also and fallen short. I hope you see yourself a little bit as well. It says, and I, the Lord God, will judge you like women who commit adultery or shed blood or are judged. And I will bring on you the blood of wrath and jealousy. Because he's our God and we're his bride or his wife. I will also hand you over to your lovers and they will tear down your shrines, demolish your high places, strip you of your clothing, take away your jewels, and they will leave you naked and bare. Just like Babylonia, just like the Chaldeans did with the, with the Israelites. They took everything. They took everything and, and demolished everything. They did it. They tried to be nice at first, but they demolished everything. They will also incite a crowd against you and they will stone you and slaughter you with their swords. Remember he said, the sword, the famine, and the pestilence. They did. They will burn down your houses with fire and execute judgments on you in the sight of many women. Then I will, which were Gentile nations, other nations will see it. Then I will make you cease your prostitution and you will no longer hire your lovers. So I will calm my wrath towards you because you will stop doing this. And my jealousy resulting from being denied what is rightfully and uniquely mine. He's due our loyalty. He's due our honor. He's due our obedience. He's due our worship. It's due to him by virtue of what he's done for us. By virtue of creating, protecting, loving, caring for us. It's due to him. We pay the government their taxes. They extract them from us. The Lord has been um, lenient enough to ask to, to allow us to give him freely our offerings. The government takes them from us. But that doesn't make just because he allows you to give or allows us to give him our offering doesn't make it any less his because he does not extract it from our paychecks or from our homes. Anyway, I'll start it again. So I will call my wrath towards you and my jealousy uh, resulting from being denied what is rightfully and uniquely mine will turn uh, um, will turn away from you. So and he says and my jealousy will turn away from you. I will be pacified and no longer and no longer angry. After he this will be fine after he stops them from doing this. You will no longer hire your lovers. You will no longer be able to do it. Because we can't afford it because we're out here in these streets by ourselves with nothing. Because you have not remembered the days of your youth, but you have enraged me with all these things. Therefore I I in turn will bring your conduct down on your own head, says the Lord God. So that you will not commit this lewdness on top of all your other repulsive acts. Behold, everyone who uses proverbs will use this proverb against you, like mother, like daughter. Wow. You are the daughter of your mother who loathed her husband and her children. You are the sister of your sisters who loathed their husbands and their children. Your spiritual mother was a Hittite and your spiritual father an Amorite. That was also that your spiritual people were the ones that are your neighboring people that were pagans. That's who, your, that's who you seem to, to be following, the people that were around you. These are your spiritual people. These are, these are your leaders. Now your older sister is Samaria. She is with her daughters, outlying cities, who live north of you. And your younger sister is Sodom, she with, with her daughters who live south of you. Yet you have not merely walked in their ways or behaved in accordance with your pagan practices, but as if that were too little, you soon acted more corruptly in all your ways than they. As I live, says the Lord God, Sodom, your sister, and her daughters have not done as you and your daughters have done. He's done. And, and so this is what happened. Samaria was, was north. And they were okay. They were in the northern part, and they were part of Israel, the capital, actually. And they were doing okay. I mean, they were bad enough, but they weren't at the level he's saying that Jerusalem was, and that Judah was. These they weren't on this level. That these people really did some bad stuff. Still going. Behold, this was the sin of your sister Sodom. She and her daughters, outlying cities, had arrogance, abundant food, and careless ease, but she did not help the poor and needy. So they had, they were arrogant. They allowed things to happen. So it doesn't mention homosexuality as the, the Sodom sin. So people that, you know, talk about Sodom sin, God says their sin was arrogance, abundant, having a whole lot and careless ease. Didn't care about too much. It was all carefree. 
You can't be carefree in God's kingdom. You, you, we have things to, to take care of. And we should be care. And they did not help the poor and needy. We were supposed to help the poor and needy. They were haughty and committed repulsive acts before me. Therefore, I removed them when I saw it. Furthermore, Samaria did not commit half of your sins. But you have greatly increased your repulsive acts more than bad. So you have made your wicked sister Samaria and Sodom appear righteous and justified by comparison to all the disgusting things which you have done. Also bear your disgrace as punishment, um, having made judgment favorable for your sisters. For because of your sins in which you have behaved more repulsively than they, they are more in the right than you. So you, in comparison, you're the real bad person and they're pretty good. Yes, be ashamed and bear your disgrace, for you made your pagan sisters seem righteous. That's how bad they were. We can't be looking like we can't be making everybody on that supposed to not be Christian look like they are. Nevertheless, I will restore them again from their captivity. The captivity of Sodom and her daughters. See how he's always has a, a plan of redemption. The captivity of Samaria and her daughters. And along with them, I will restore you from your own captivity in the day of the Lord God. So that you, Judah, will bear your humiliation and disgrace and be thoroughly ashamed for, for all the wickedness. It means real repentance. You'll be, will be a, a real true repentance. Not just because I'm sorry, but I'm sorry, sorry. I'm really sorry. I'm not just, I'm sorry. I, no, it's, it's not. It's a, I'm a sorry I'm, and I'm never going to do it again. I'm never going to do that again. I'm a, I might do something, but I ain't going to never do that. That's what, that's what this is. Your sister Sodom and her daughters from Ans and Samaria or Samaria and her daughters will return to their former state and you and your daughters will return to your former state for the name of your sister Sodom was not mentioned by you except as a byword all right a byword that's a uh, a notorious word that like you know oh you know how Sodom you know like it's a it's a bad thing in the day of your pride when David ruled you thought they you were better than them before your own wickedness was uncovered so you was talking bad about them until you, until you got exposed the same thing about these nations that you know America talks about that need to be all de um, de democratic and have democracy as their form of government yet they they still oppress people of color and and pe poor people and they don't help all everybody's not treated the same that's the same thing your own wickedness is, is uncovered that's the kind of thing that they're talking about now you become an object of reproach and a byword for the daughters of, of Aram and of Edom and all who are around her, and for the daughters of the Philistines, those surrounding you who despise you. The people around you despise you. And the people around around the world despise us too, America. And other nations. Nobody's looked upon favorably by everybody. And our neighbors look at us always a, a little bit with a side eye. You have borne the penalty of your lewdness and your repulsive acts, says the Lord. Yes, thus, says the Lord, I will also deal with you as you have done. Yet you who have despised the oath by breaking the covenant. He, he made a covenant with them and they need, they need to remember it. And it says, nevertheless, I will remember with compassion my covenant with you in the days of your youth. Now I will establish an everlasting covenant with you. Then you will remember your ways and be ashamed when you receive your sisters, both your older and your younger. I will give, so who was the older? Samaria and Samaria. And who was the younger? That was um, Sodom. I will give them to you as daughters, but not because of your covenant with me. And I will establish my covenant with you, and you will know without any doubt that I am the Lord, so that you may remember in detail and be ashamed and never open your mouth again because of your humiliation. When I have forgiven you for all that you have done, says the Lord God. After this punishment, it's not going to never have to happen again. Ezekiel 17 now. Now the word of the Lord came to me saying, Son of man, ask a riddle and tell a parable. So he's He's still trying to give them parables so they can see. House of the Lord, um, to the house of Israel, saying, Thus says the Lord God, a great eagle, Nebuchadnezzar, with great wings, long pinions, and a rich plumage of many colors, came to Lebanon and took away the top of the seer. So the top was Judah. He broke off the topmost of its young twigs, which was uh, Jehoiakim, and carried it to a land of traders. Remember, he, he was part of the first. Jehoiakim was, went with... Um, the, during the first siege, and he set it in a city of merchants. Uh, he also took some of the seed of the land um, and planted it in a fertile soil and a fruitful field. So he 
left Zedekiah here. He left Zedekiah here, uh, which was his uncle, right? He placed it beside abundant water and set it like a, a willow tree. Then it sprouted and grew and became a, became a low spreading vine whose branches turned in submission toward him, but his roots remained under it. So it became a vine and yielded shoots and sent out branches, right? It grew. There was also another great eagle with great wings and many feathers, and that's probably Egypt. And behold, this vine Zedekiah bent its roots toward him. Remember, because he was looking for um, Egypt to help him out of this situation. He didn't want to be with Nebuchadnezzar. He decided to rebel and sent out his branches toward him away from the bed where it was planted to him to water. It was planted in good soil and where water was plentiful for it to produce leaves and branches and to bear fruit so that it might become a splendid vine. Thus says the Lord God, ask, will it thrive? Will he not uproot it and strip off its fruit so that all its sprouting leaves will wither? So he was already warned to keep, to make sure that, and, oh, they understood that Nebuchadnezzar was going to, um, to take them into captivity and to submit to that. That was just the way of it. But he was rebelling like he could do something against it or, or you know, to stop it, actually. It says, it will not take a strong arm for many people to uproot it. Though it is planted, will it thrive and grow? Will it not completely wither when the east wind touches it? The east wind is Nebuchadnezzar. It will wither in the beds where it grew. So it's going to die. You're going to kill off more than you were supposed to. It was You were supposed to thrive. Your land was supposed to stay the way it was. You were supposed to go into captivity and do what you were told. But you, you your um, arrogance and your breaking of an oath has brought us here. Moreover, the word of the Lord came to me saying, Say now to the rebellious house, that means Zedekiah's house, do you not know what these things mean? Tell them, hear this. The king of Babylon came to Jerusalem and took its king, Jehoiakim, and its princes and brought them with him to Babylon. By the way, Daniel was part of the group, the first siege that went with Jehoiakim when he came and got him. We went through a second siege and that's where Ezekiel has gone into captivity. And then there has to be a third one. And that's where we are here. Still moving on. He took a member of the royal family, the king's uncle Zedekiah, there you go, and made a covenant with him, putting him under oath. So there was a covenant made. God doesn't play about the covenants. He also took the important leaders of the land so that the kingdom would be in subjection, unable to restore itself and rise again. But that, by keeping his covenant, it might continue. The kingdom could stay. It could stand. It would not be de desolate. It would not be a, an abomination. It would not be a... Uh, a horror as with the way it looked, but he's made it such. But Zedekiah rebelled against Nebuchadnezzar by sending him ambassadors to Egypt so that they might give him horses and many troops. There he goes, confirmed with Egypt, the other that that's what we're talking we're talking about in the uh, parable. Will he succeed? Will he do? Uh, will he or will he who does such things escape? Can he indeed break the covenant with the with Babylon and still escape? As I live, says the Lord God, surely in the country of the king Nebuchadnezzar, who made Zedekiah the vassal king, whose oath he despised and whose covenant he broke, in Babylon Zedekiah shall die. Pharaoh, with his mighty arm and great company, great company, will not help him in the war. When that's the Pharaoh of, of of Egypt, when they, the Babylonians, put up ramps and build siege walls to destroy many lives, siege walls. What are the siege walls in our life? What's coming up against us that we're not able to stop because of our lack of prayer life, our lack of worship, our lack of devotion, our lack of um, loyalty to the Lord? There are siege walls. What are the what are uh, what are your siege walls? We all have them. What um, is it? TV? Is it the internet? Is it uh, is it good works? Um, family? What's in our life that's coming up against? our worship and our total devotion to the Lord. We've got to, to keep our allegiance strong to the Lord and keep our relationship strong and keep those siege walls um, from overtaking us and let's pray them off. I'm just saying, these are my thoughts. So it says, now Zedekiah dishonored the oath by breaking the covenant and behold, he gave his hand and pledged his allegiance, yet did all these things. He shall not escape. Therefore, thus says the Lord God, as I live, I will bring down on his head on his own head, my oath. So he, the Lord does not like you dishonoring your, your, your covenant. You cannot, your oath, you got, we got to keep our word to people. We got to keep our word and our, our word to him for sure. He does not forget it. 
at, if you don't remember all the words you've made, ask the Lord to bring to remembrance so that you can keep your word and you can, you know, ask for forgiveness, please. All right, still going. As I live, I will bring down on his on his own head my oath, which Zedekiah dishonored, and my covenant, which he broke. I will spread my net over him, and he will be caught in my snare. And I will bring him to Babylon and will enter into judgment with him there for his treason, which he has committed against me. Because the Lord allowed this to happen. All the choice men and all his troops will fall by the sword. And those that survive will be scattered to every wind. And you will know without any doubt that I, the Lord, have spoken. Thus says the Lord God, I myself will take a twig from the, the lofty top of the cedar and will set it out. I will crop off from the topmost of his young twigs a tender one, and I will plant it on a high and lofty mountain. I will plant it on the mountain heights of Israel, and that it may grow bows and bear fruit and be a noble and stately cedar. That's, that's our King Jesus. And birds of every kind will live under it, and they will nest securely in the shade of its branches. He is the true vine. And the trees of the field will know that I, the Lord, bring down the tall tree, exalt the low tree. He was a, just a small baby. Dry up the green tree and make the, the dry tree flourish. I am the Lord. I have spoken and I will fulfill it. There will be a, he will rebuild it again. And Jesus will be the king. We need to repent in the meantime while we still have time. These are my thoughts. Will you pray this prayer of salvation and repentance with me? Father, it is written in your word that if I confess with my mouth that Jesus is Lord and I believe in my heart that you have raised him from the dead, I shall be saved. Therefore, Father, I confess that Jesus is my Lord. I make him Lord of my life right now. I believe in my heart that you raised Jesus from the dead. I renounce my past life with Satan and close the door to any of his devices. I thank you for forgiving me of all my sin. Jesus is my Lord and I am a new creation. Old things have passed away. Now all things become new. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. If you have said this prayer with me, put your name in the chat and we will rejoice with you. God bless you. God keep you. And if you have said this prayer with me and you have no church home, put your name, your city, and your state in the chat home in the chat. And we will help you find a church home as we have uh, members all over the country. And we will direct you to a, a loving and Bible teaching church that will help cultivate the gifts God has given you so that you can do the work that He has purposed for your life. Finally, do me a favor if you don't mind. Like and share this page and subscribe to our channel. God bless you. We are blessed to have you be with us. And remember, it's about time. It really, really is.